Yo dudes, what's going on? Dying Food here today, coming back at you with another video. And today, we have a viewer request. So, shout out to Peas. Peas on YouTube, give Peas a chance. One of my subscribers and viewers gave me this idea and he wanted to know from me, what are 10 changes that I would make to World War II as of right now? Real quick, before we get into it, if you would like to support this channel, leave a like on this video. It will really help me out. I know all my regulars will do it anyway because they support me in all my videos no matter what I do. But if you're new around here and would like to support, that would be really cool. And also subscribe for more Call of Duty content for all titles, both current and past. Without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm so happy to say that if you asked me the same question a couple of months ago, that the two biggest things that I would have changed have already been changed. Those two being unlimited sprint and raising the points per kill and domination. Well, Dom hasn't taken effect yet, but they're going to do it, so that's a good thing. Luckily, we don't have to talk about either of those. So for my list today, there's going to be a few different categories of things. I'm just going to list them off. They're really in no particular order. Some will be big and kind of game changing and change the bigger picture of COD and others are just kind of minor little things maybe cosmetic or just something really small so sit back relax and enjoy and i want you to put your list of things in the comments even if it's not 10 things just put a couple things that you would change in the comments then wait till the end of the video see if they match any of mine and then i could get a feel for how others are feeling about the game number one I would put orders or challenges in the game for every single weapon. I think this is something that every single person watching this is going to agree on. It really has been great these last couple of weeks when they're giving us these kind of daily challenges to get these weapons and or variants. But the problem with doing it this way is that if you miss the window of opportunity, it's over and you may never get that weapon again. You know, you, me and everyone watching this, we love, we love COD. We play a lot of COD, but... We're also real people, we have real things to do, and I can't get on every single day. I get on most days, but not every day. So if there's a weapon that I really want that I haven't gotten the chance to get and the order is over for that day, what the hell am I supposed to do, you know? And obviously, and of course the answer is to buy supply drops, which is what they want us to do. But I think that it would just be really nice if they kept supply drops completely cosmetic only, which they are for the most part. I know there are some weapons in it, but for the most part it is cosmetic only. Or just keep the weapons in there and create a whole new way to get weapons. My idea would be this, have a brand new vendor in the headquarters. You could call them like the arms dealer or something. And you go there and get the challenges to unlock the weapons and then everyone's happy, right? Even if the challenges were a little bit harder, because I know surprisingly for a lot of these weapons, the challenges are really easy. Like one of them was like, get 50 kills with an SMG. That's, you know, that's a pretty low bar to have. So even if they made them a little bit harder, but you could guarantee to do them, I would be fine with that. Basically, as long as you could get the weapons whenever you want and you could be on your own schedule instead of the event schedule or the order schedule, that is how I would change this system. Number two, I really want to see one core mode at all times that has double XP available. A couple of reasons for this. First one being the rank up is just painfully slow in this game. It really is. Remember when the game launched and they accidentally had double XP and then changed it to triple XP and everyone was like flying through their prestiges. Yeah, that was really nice. And then going from that to the current way it's ranked up was pretty painful. So I know that there is often a playlist that has double XP, but I want to have a permanent one. I want Sledgehammer to say there's always going to be one list with double XP. And I would be fine with this happening in any game mode because it's actually good for the players too. It gives you an incentive to try new game modes that you normally wouldn't play. And you might discover that you like that game mode. You know, most people just play TDM or Dom, but there are other game modes that I think Sledgehammer worked really hard on like War and Gridiron and those modes just aren't as popular. I don't see that many people posting gameplay of those, so it would be good for us because we might discover a new game mode that we like, and it'll be good for them because they could see that all their hard work is now being put to use by the community that they made it for. And we could actually rank up at what would seem like a normal rate. Number three, I want to see a better or improved sound engine, specifically for footsteps. So I know they made a recent change to the resistance division where you could hear footsteps louder, but if you go and watch any videos, like go watch exclusive aces video, of this test that he did it really barely changed anything like hardly at all it's, it's very not noticeable and if you don't have a headset just forget it i mean good luck hearing footsteps even with this new change it's just very difficult who here had a headset and cod ghosts and used dead silence amplify now that <laughs> well as overpowered as it may be that is the type of footsteps that i'm looking for in this game because honestly i'm sick of getting shot in the back i'm sick of getting shot in the side and having guys sneak up on me the way these maps are designed it's like 
you could get taken out from any angle at pretty much any time so why can't you have the option to prevent that if possible not only that but i just think that sound touring is a staple part of any competitive game and if you're willing to pay attention to the footsteps to know when they're coming and what direction they're coming from then you should be rewarded because it's not really as easy as it sounds like when you're sound touring you have to kind of have one part of your brain paying attention to that the whole time in the background while you're doing other things so it's multitasking it's definitely not easy it's not hard but you know you got to practice it a little bit and if you're willing to do it it should be able to benefit you moving on to number four this one's not specific to world war ii but it could benefit the call of duty series as a whole i want to see higher rewards for holding the hard point when playing hard point when you are in the hard point every single person in the game knows that somebody is in some tiny little area and they know that all they have to do is come in there and throw a grenade or come in to spraying bullets and they could probably get you out basically standing in the hard point for any extended period of time which you have to do if you want to win is a death sentence so if you're not guaranteeing yourself a death but pretty much saying hey there's a pretty high chance i might die from doing this why would you not get a bigger reward for that? I think it should just be something like, I don't know, maybe every 10 seconds you get 50 points for standing in there. Something where you can find a balance so it's not giving away free points, but something to contribute towards your score streaks and reward you for risking your life to win the game. Nothing makes me more furious than finishing a game a hard point and losing than looking at my teammates and seeing all the zero or one second players that are on the scoreboard. But it's like at the same time, I can't really blame them because there's no reason to stand in the hard point. You don't get rewarded for it. I mean, you win the game, but you don't get any in-game rewards. If you give players an additional way to get their score streaks, which let's face it, that's what everybody wants, they will respond to it by changing their behavior and playstyle. Number five, this one's pretty simple, pretty quick, but I really want to see a buff to the launcher. And the reason I say this is because have you ever used a launcher and tried to kill people with it? Insane how bad they are in this game. It's like they're really, really bad. There's no splash damage whatsoever. Pretty much has to be a direct hit to get a kill with it. You know, if you miss even by like a centimeter and it goes right past a guy but hits the wall directly behind him, he won't even take a hit marker. It's insane. My fix for this would be this leave the damage the same right now but if you use the launched basic training have that be a little buff do a little extra damage and get that splash damage that we're used to in other cod games basically like i don't want to use this term because it's kind of a dirty term but almost like danger close but only for the launchers and full disclosure the reason i'm putting this on the list is because i am on the chrome grind right now and holy hell it was just so difficult to get the kills with the launcher i'll probably change my mind completely about this as soon as i get diamond Moving on, probably one of the ones I want the most. I want to be able to select which war mode operation you play when you play war. Here's why. When you play any normal COD game, you could expect the game to last a maximum of 10 minutes. But when you play war mode, you could be in there anywhere from 5 to 30 minutes. And to me, that is just ridiculous considering how bad some of those operations are. This is all opinion, but I really, really strongly dislike Operation Neptune, which is the Normandy one and Operation Intercept, which is the DLC one where you have to free the prisoners. Now, don't get me wrong. I think the Normandy one looks pretty cool visually. You know, aesthetically, it's very pleasing. It's the most famous scene of World War II. It's got historic value. They all have historic value, but this was the most iconic part of World War II in real life. But for these operations, I just hate that you have to run so far in the beginning of each one. Like, as soon as you die, when you're on the attacking side, you're set back so incredibly far. It's just boring. Honestly, Honestly, it's really boring, especially in Neptune. There's so much sniping. This is just my opinion. I happen to dislike these two. I would never play them again if I could. For me, I would invest a lot more time into playing War Mode if I knew I would be spending it playing Breakout and Griffin, which to me are the two better ones. Number seven, I just wanted to optimize the UI a little bit more. I know it's come a long way since launch, but there are still some problems with it. The load times are still quite hefty. I know they're not as bad as they used to be, but they still take a while. There's lagginess, there's delay. And the thing that I really hate is that there's a lot of failed party invites. I don't know why this is such an issue in like every single COD, but if you want to play with someone, you almost always, at least on Xbox, you almost always have to invite them from the Xbox Live menu. Super annoying. Don't know why they can't get it right, but I'm so tired of seeing invite failed on all these COD titles. 
Number eight, I really don't want to be forced to watch emotes anymore. I really don't. I really, truly don't see the value at all of emotes being in a World War II themed game. I could see how they were in Black Ops 3 and Infinite Warfare, but if you're going for authenticity, this really, really just, I mean, first of all, it ruins the theme of the game for me. But second of all, and more importantly, it takes so long to load these things up and you have to watch that screen for, you know, God knows how many seconds it takes. It's just a waste of time, basically. I don't think you should be forced to watch them. Either that or get them onto another screen, which you can do other stuff and like see your classes and stuff too, because just waiting to see people do emotes, I don't know, it, it just, it's stupid. You know, it's stupid. I'm in a World War II themed game fighting in all these historical locations. Then after the game, I have to watch animations of soldiers doing backflips and shit. I don't know. It's just dumb to me. Number nine, I want to see the return of wager matches, just like they were in Black Ops 1. I think it would be really fun and interesting to be able to bet your armory credits on games of gun game and other party modes that they add into the game, or like in the 1v1 pit or something like that. There are many things that could be done with it, and I always hear YouTubers talking about this, how we should bring this back, and generally the community agrees but for some reason we've never gotten the ability to do this back since that game especially now too since armory credits are way more important than cod points were in black ops 1 like people would actually play those modes more seriously i think you'd see a huge surge in the amount of people playing gun game if you could get armory credits which then can be used to do collections and get weapons etc and finally number 10 i want to see a more advanced sophisticated feedback system and this goes for all titles. I know this kind of started in Black Ops 3, where they ask you, did you have fun last match? They have in World War II, but it's so vague and so non-specific. And I think that if they were to explore ways to get more detail and information and data out of this, it would do a world of wonders for COD. My idea would be this, have a certain section of the Call of Duty website where you can go and sign up to be a part of the feedback program, right? And then maybe like, I don't know, say once a month, you would get a survey asking specific questions. And if you complete the survey, then you get maybe a rare supply drop or some kind of bribe or something, some kind of good reward, good enough to get people to get on there doing it and taking it seriously. Activision and the devs could come up with specific questions as needed and give you like a rating system. Like instead of just saying yes or no, it could say how much fun did you have last match on a scale of one to five? What was the reason you had or did not have fun? And then give you some choices or even have open-ended questions where you could type your answers in. I think this would be so much more valuable for the decision-making process on the developers and the publishers. It's a no-brainer. Just reward the community for taking the time to give you honest feedback. Being able to have data like this flow in by the handful instead of having to go on Reddit and read other people's posts and stuff is just so much more efficient and it's going to help them prioritize which projects to work on at first. I think it would be amazing for Call of Duty in the long run. So there you have it, dudes. Those are 10 changes that I would make to World War II if it was up to me. Shout out to Peas for the idea. Thank you so much, my friend. Hope you enjoyed. Like I said, I want to know from you guys, how does this list differ for yours? Leave it down in the comments below. Look forward to reading all your responses. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up as it really helps the channel out. And huge thank you to all the regular supporters over here. If you're new, please subscribe to the channel for more Call of Duty content for all titles, both current and past, and turn on notifications, blah, blah, blah. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter so you know when streams are happening links in the description below and that's it guys i'll see you in the next one